Welcome to God Friday Discussions. As we embark on this journey together, it's important to acknowledge the diversity of thoughts, beliefs, and experiences that each of us brings to the table. Our discussions are rooted in the spirit of exploration, learning, and mutual respect. The views expressed are those of the individual participants and are presented for the purpose of open dialogue and personal reflection. Please note, we recognize and honor the freedom of personal belief. This platform does not advocate for any singular viewpoint as the absolute authority on spiritual matters. Our discussions are intended as a safe space for sharing and growth. We encourage you to approach each session with an open heart and mind, but also respect your personal boundaries. If at any point you find the content not to your liking or comfort, you are free to disengage as you see fit. While we seek to provide enriching content, participation is entirely voluntary. We assume no responsibility for the personal decisions or interpretations made in response to our discussions. Our aim is to foster a community where curiosity, faith, and understanding can flourish. Thank you for joining us on this journey. And for this week, our topic is going to be prayer. And um, I, I think uh, it would be cool to um, actually found uh, a YouTube video that um, has like a prayer for events, meetings, and gatherings. So maybe uh, maybe we can just get that going for a second and we can view it together. I was thinking it'd be cool to like, in this discussion, people can bring in videos or content that they found cool or appealing or something, and we can kind of watch it together and share it. So let's dive in to that opening prayer. Discord has all these fancy things, so might as well use them, right? Definitely. Commercially. They're not paying us either. What's going on here? Bestow your guidance and blessing upon each attendee. May we honor one another by keeping an open mind. May we voice our truth and listen with an open heart. Bless everyone present today that each may be able to share his or her contributions and gifts. Grant good health and safety to loved ones left outside this room and bestow peace and goodwill to all of us. We ask for your wisdom and grace to use our talents for the betterment of others. May the various activities related to this day be a success through your intervention. Gratitude, we offer this prayer in your name. Amen. Nice. All right. Yeah. Go ahead, doing, Matt. Guys? What are we doing? What are we doing? All right. I guess, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, the past few weeks, uh, Raj has been wanting to do prayer, and everybody was like, "Nope, we're doing something else." Nope, we're doing something else. And every Not time we ask something, <laughs> well, well, it just seems like uh, you know, you you be like, "Hey, let's do prayer," and everybody, like, "What about this?" And everybody else would vote for the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely, so it's, it's pretty funny. And so, part of me, part of me is yeah, like, so, yeah, I, I want to do that too, but I'm like, no, but I, I still <laughs> want to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So stick to my guns. Oh no. Uh oh. Okay, we got Sorry. you. Again. All good. Yeah. So this week I was actually uh, thinking about switching it up to um, something. A little, little different. Maybe it might be a little controversial, but like election or something like that. But I said, nah, we'll go with prayer. So part of me when I was going through the prayer thing was like, 
ah, I don't know about this one. And then I started, you know, typically like doing my reading and it was like, oh, okay, yep, this is good. So, um, I guess the way I kind of, uh, present what I'm going to present is, uh, first I'll start off with, you know, how, how do we pray, I guess, from a Christian perspective, right? So, uh, there's like a formula, um, and Jesus kind of gave it through the Lord's prayer, prayer. So that's not actually like a prayer, like, I'm not going to say it's not a prayer you should be praying. He's like, it, it's a, it's a template that you should be using when you want to pray, right? So when you first start off, you begin by praising God for who he is. And I think that even aligns with our, our Muslim brothers, your Muslim actual brother. And, uh, so you just recognize his holiness, his greatness, and, you know, his love. So there's a scripture that kind of like coincides with this, and it's Psalm uh, 95, verse 6. It said, come, let us bow down in worship, and let us kneel before the Lord and Maker, our Maker. So it's an invitation to worship God uh, with humility and reverence, right? So recognizing him as the creator and the sustainer of all of creation. So the acts of bowing down and kneeling uh, symbolize uh, submission, uh, which ironically, I believe, Islam means to submit. So it's pretty cool. So the act of bowing down and kneeling... Islam means uh, to submit? ...is a form of submission. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I learned that from your brother, one of our, one of our first, uh, first things we did, man. Your brother oh, actually dang. taught us that. Come on, bro. You grew up. You grew up around this stuff, and you don't know this. You gotta do better, Raj. I didn't realize it's long. <laughs> I'm. All right, I'm. I'm gonna Google that one. Let's see. Well, Google it. Google it. I'll keep going. All right. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this ver this verse encourages like a uh, a posture of worship, of just acknowledging God's greatness and dependence uh, on Him as our, our Lord, our Savior, our Maker, our Creator. Right. Like, so you start off with adoration slash reverence, right? And then it's kind of like a confession afterwards, right? So acknowledge your sins and ask for God's forgiveness, you know? So in uh, John verse 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our, our unrighteousness. Um... So this, uh, in this context, uh, John presents Jesus as like, uh, like the, the true light. So the light is the central, to, the central thing to his revelation and his salvation, although the world he created did not recognize him. So like the, the world didn't actually accept Jesus, which is pretty, pretty crazy when you think about it. So the surrounding verses emphasize uh, just those verses that John's giving in uh in that chapter, it's just acknowledging Jesus, right? And asking him for forgiveness, essentially. Also, uh, you should give like a, a thanksgiving. So you got to express your gratitude, right? So express your gratitude for all the things he does for you, right? Even all the things you think he's not doing. So if you got things that are like going bad, that you think are going bad, acknowledge like, hey, thank you for guiding me to the direction that I'm supposed to be going, you know? Because sometimes those obstacles thrown in your way are like God's detour to direct you to where you actually need to be. You know what I mean? So in Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 18, uh, it says, give thanks in all circumstances. So regardless of what you're going through, um, good, bad, give, if you're going to give all, God all the bad or give him all the good, well, if you're going to give them all the bad, give them all the good as well. If that makes sense. Sorry. Um, so it aligns when with the praying? teachings by, like, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, while you're praying, give thanks. So even thank him for the, the thank troublesome for the times that you're going stuff. through at the moment. Yes, exactly. Because, uh, like I told you, sometimes it's actually like a, a detour he's throwing in front of you. You know, God says, God disciplines the children that he loves, right? So if you're being disciplined by God, you're 
it's a sign that he loves you, man. If you're not being disciplined, I, I'd be worried. You know what I mean? So express gratitude, essentially, right? Um, and then you come to, like, the present your request, your supplication, present your request, and your needs, right? So uh, Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, right? So this, this verse is like telling believers to be thankful in every situation they face. This verse just teaches that gratitude and regular should be a regular part of a Christian's life. And by giving thanks in all circumstances, uh, align with, you know, God's will in general, man. So you come to like the Lord's Prayer, right? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, right? Thy kingdom come. So you're acknowledging. Yeah, did you ever know what that meant? Hallowed be thy name? Yeah, we, we talked about it on the other, uh, on one of the other God Fridays. It was right? like high honor kind of thing, right? It's, it's like, it, it, uh, a reverence is what we, exactly what we're talking about. Reverence, yeah. right? So he says, give us this day our daily, give us what we need. And like, not only that, like, let's be thankful that you give us what we need. So for your provision, um, give us, thank you for your provision, essentially, right? And uh, before that was actually, uh, let your will be done, not mine. Not my desires. Like, if my desires don't align with your will, let your will be done versus my desires, right? But also, you know, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, which we just did a whole uh, last, two, two weeks ago. We had two weeks of forgiveness, right, and the importance of it. And what we've come to the realization between, like, the Abrahamic religions is that God forgives you the way you forgive others. So that's, it's an extremely important part of that prayer, right, is forgiving others. And then God will forgive you your sins, right? Absolve you of yours. And, you know, he now just lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He just let us keep guiding us. It's essentially, we're seeking protection and guidance from you. Then you should kind of lead into, like, what it is you, you really want, man, you know? And there's probably not really a right or wrong way to prayer. I think prayer is just like a relationship, like establishing a relationship with God. He just wants you to chat with him, man, just like a parent. Sit there and talk with him. And you could be as raw as you want with him. Uh, like, really, really raw. So I, I, then I got into, like, kind of why we pray. Why do we pray? So it's a, it's a direct line to God. Uh, so in Jeremiah chap, or, uh, chapter 33, verses 3, he says, Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So if you call to God and you really want to know, uh, you know, something, like God will answer you, right? So setting of this verse was Jeremiah uh, was confined in this courtyard by a guard in prison. So God reminds him of uh, his sovereignty as a creator of earth. God invites Jeremiah to call upon him and promising him to reveal great and unsearchable things. Uh... So God describes the immediate consequences of Judah's sins. So essentially, uh, you know, Jeremiah called out to him and God responded, I guess is the simplest way that we could save them from a troublesome situation is probably the easiest way, you know what I mean, to put it, rather than getting to the meat and potatoes of this. Sure. So also we pray, yeah, you know, uh, we pray to communicate with God, then we pray to seek his will, right? So Jesus and his disciples, uh, well, Matthew chapter 26, verse 39 says, yet not as I will, but as you will. So this one, it got really deep for me as I really got into this one, man. So uh, Jesus and his disciples are at the Olive Gore where Jesus is, went to pray. He instructs his disciples, hey, Watch me, watch, watch, be on the lookout while I pray, right? So, uh, Jesus, he's really thinking of, this is right before, uh, like, the, the delivering of him to 
the authorities. So he, he knows what's about to happen, and he becomes, like, really, like, sad and troubled, man. To the point he has to go back to his disciples, and once he do, he finds him asleep, right? So, kind of rebukes them somewhat. And then uh, tells him, hey, man, wait, wake up and do what I told you to do. And then uh, while he's going through this process, he's actually asking God, like, because you think about it, Jesus is a human being and God at the same exact time. Is there another way? Uh, like, do I really have to do this? Like, he was really not wanting to do this. But it, boy, basically what he was saying, let not my will be done, man. Let not my humanity, you know, dictate what it is. Let's let your will be done. So him facing, like, the most excruciating. Did you know that the word excruciating actually came from the word crucifixion? Oh no, that's interesting. Excruci yeah, so the most excruciating. Yeah. Yeah, so the most excruciating type of death you can face. I mean, just the betrayal, the. I mean, if you really want to get into the depth of it, like his disciples were kind of selfish during that time, like thinking about themselves, how they could benefit from his death and and whatnot. But he even asked. Before he's being delivered, if there's another way, like three different times essentially, and you know, then he then he went to uh, do God's will essentially, right? So, so we pray to seek God's will, right? So what else? Uh, we pray to express our dependence on God because really we are dependent on God. When you become independent of God, it's when things. Things get slippery. And this is like a, a touchy subject for a lot of people when I think about it because people I, I I've never I never worship God and look how great my life is. So do you need do you need God for your life to be great? I mean be honest. Like do you think you do? Um, I think it comes down to definitions a little bit, because like um, some people will define God as like a man in the sky with a wizard hat. And I think like that's a popular visual that people have when it comes to God. So, um, I don't really believe in that kind of God necessarily, but, um, if you're talking about like the energy that creates everything or something like that, then that makes a lot more sense uh to me and um and i think even if you don't believe what about in an the... atheist what about an atheist can an atheist have a, a meaningful life a happy life and still not know god i think so because i think god doesn't have to have the name god to know god like god goes by all sorts of names and so an atheist may just may call it like love or um uh, unity with um, or like connection or something like that and um, yeah I think that's kind of like an equivalent basically yeah I, I think I, I never looked at it from that direction I don't see from an atheist perspective like you, yeah. the way you just described it like um, maybe they look at like they do believe in God, but they don't. The, the, their their perception of it is different, like you said, maybe, right? I think it's like they don't believe in other people's definition of God, but they, like, they understand that life exists, like, they exist, right? Like, oh, I'm here right now. There's a bunch of humans around here doing stuff. So I think, like, to that extent. But, yeah, it's like they, they don't, they don't, uh like... I think atheists have um, um, a resistance to like supernatural or magical kind of ideas about God. And uh, so like maybe that type of God doesn't exist. So I, I think it comes down to definitions, like how we're defining, how a religion defines God how versus how the individual defines God. And um, yeah, but, like, if you define God as, like, 
the magic energy that keeps our heart beating like um like you can go you can go into science and biology and be like okay well it's uh neurons that are programmed to like excite the heart tissue but like we still like even science doesn't really understand why this kind of things how all science does is knows that it does that so um in a way like we we still have to have this faith or belief in this sort of thing that's keeping life going somehow <laughs> no, that, that's a uh, no it's just interesting and every time i hear you like uh Like when you just describe God, it's like, it's like it just makes sense, man. Like it's like you're. It'd be like saying, if I looked at God as a cake, you're looking at like what are the ingredients of that cake? You know what I mean? Right. And that's right. what you think about. Like, what are the ingredients that make that cake? And maybe that is what makes up God. And maybe that's a deeper level of understanding. And maybe it's the same thing. But yeah, yeah, I just kind of wanted to get into that real quick because uh, I, I don't believe that you need. I, I know plenty of people who don't believe in God that live. I, I would say they're they're content with their lives. Um, they're not discontent, uh, you know. So, but so the, the last the last one of the last notes was why we pray is to express dependence on God. Like right. So in uh, John fifteen. Chapter or verse five, it says, "Apart from me, you can do nothing." Okay, and there's a whole probably dialogue we could have into that, but I'll move on for the sake of time at the moment. So, what is the effect of prayer? So, prayer brings you peace, right? So, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, that's Philippians uh, chapter four, verse seven. So just talks about rejoice in the lord always and i say rejoice right so uh the peace of god which on which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in jesus christ so the peace of god will protect you from like the the day-to-day because -day. we can turn on the news we can turn on the tv we can find so much shit to just bicker about be negative about that's why it's in, for me it's important like to be careful what you fill yourself with right you gotta fill yourself with the the right shit. Essentially, you know, you can't fill yourself with you can't fill yourself with toxic stuff and not be toxic. You know what I mean? Like if you're constantly, oh, the world's ending. You're like, okay, well, doom and gloom. You know what I mean? If it's yeah. ending, like, well, what are you doing now? What are you doing now to, you know, enjoy life, right? So, um. That was, it brings peace, right? Uh, brings strength. So prayer pr provides strength to, to face challenges. So Isaiah, which Isaiah was, we constantly reference that book. So that book's, Isaiah was one of the prophets. All right, so, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. So that's Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. So, um, and uh, the, 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 the context of this verse is, uh, the people of Israel are feeling abandoned and forgotten by God, expressing their doubts and complaints. So let's keep this in mind, man. Like these people of Israel, right? They were slaves in Egypt, okay? Um, treated like poorly under some of the worst working conditions, you know, probably, I can't imagine, you know? And God, through God, they left Egypt, right? Not only did they leave Egypt, they walked across a, a sea that allegedly dried or split i think the original or hebrew text says the ground dried but whatever it is you know but he literally led him across like a sea when they were being uh when uh egypt was ensuing them with allegedly chariots and all this other stuff right trying to he literally just rescued you and they're here complaining about you know uh how god abandoned them like what do you mean he just saved you from slavery and that's that's the, one of the things too is freedom's not free, right? Like there's a cost with it, like you know. So some people actually prefer to be in slavery. Um, so yeah, so it's a it, you pray to to get strength, right? And uh, 
transformation, right? So prayer changes us from the inside out. Uh, Romans 12, chapter 2, or Romans 12, verse 2, uh, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that's something you hear a lot within the Christian world. But basically, uh, you know, that's what prayer does. It transforms you, right? So it's kind of why why it's important. So do not conform to the world. Be transformed. Paul warns against uh, the adopting of values and behaviors of the world, right? Of the secular world. So uh, conformity implies an outward uh, shaping that aligns with the patterns of society. So you, you can understand what that means, like... Uh, when, when people say do not conform to the world uh, yeah so that I don't want to really dive too deep into that verse either and kind of one of the things that about prayer too that goes hand in hand with it and I know you didn't really want me to talk about but it's fasting right so fasting is abstaining from food for a spiritual purpose right it's not just saying I'm not gonna I'm not gonna eat because I want to diet right because I want to lose weight you gotta have like an actual agenda behind it so i'm fasting because i want to hear from god i want to god tell me where you want to direct you man so uh it amplifies our prayers and it shows our earnestness before god man so even jesus fasted like in it was just how, how important it is so fasting humbles us and it reminds us of independence of god so uh in in psalm 35 13 it says i humble myself with fasting right so uh, when you're seeking God's guidance, that's another reason you fast, which is kind of what I just mentioned as well. So in Acts 12, in Acts 13, chapter 2 and 3, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So uh, basically what it's saying is fasting can lead through, lead to spiritual breakthrough. So, and there's also a thing that says the only way I, I can't think of the verse at the top of my head, but the only way you can um, rid yourself of, like, demonic entities is through prayer and fasting. And some of these demons will only uh, manifest themselves through, through like, fasting. So, like, as a monotheist, I would say in general, like I, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of like the Muslims, but it's just an important thing. So prayer and fasting are powerful tools in the life of a Christian that draws closer to God to align with his will, essentially. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what I had. I didn't really have a lot of time to prepare, Raj, but um, no, man, that's all good. Uh, prayer I, and fasting honestly, are I think two like things that having, go hand in hand. I think so, uh, having more of a um, yeah. The thing that really stuck um, out to me the most was even when Jesus was praying, dude. Yeah. Like, you know, he is God at the same exact time. At least we believe that, right, uh, as Christians. And he's even like, dude, do I really got to do this? Yeah. And he's like, no, I, I guess if it's your will, let me do it, you know? Sure. Like, um, so I, I, I thought it was interesting what you said about fasting because... Uh, a response to like fasting is getting can angry, you hear me right? Still? I can hear you. It doesn't seem like you can hear, hear me you. though. I I can hear you, but you cannot hear me. <laughs> no. Oh, I know what happened. I can. Can you hear me you, now? You got me now. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. I can. I've always been hearing you. Maybe leave and come back. Meow, 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 meow. It's interesting how we get the reception and transmission problems. Yeah, I know I can hear you. Hold on. Let me try this one more time, Raj. Are you hearing me through your microphone? <laughs> No, I heard from the computer right now. Oh, okay. Let's try this one. Now, meow, meow. 
Can you hear me? I can still hear you. You could hear me or you can't? I can hear you. Okay. I let's just let's just move forward. I'll keep to the speakers. I'm sorry, Rash. No, all good, man. Technical difference. Yeah. Well, what what yeah, I was saying, man, I was just... yeah, what I was saying right. is that I like uh, what you were saying about fasting because um, I kind of like uh, how fasting allows one to humble themselves because, like, something I see is that when you don't eat. You get you get a little more irritable and like you get hangry basically right the hanger and um i think that is kind of like uh like fasting allows you to work with that kind of demon that really that demon doesn't really show itself unless you're like hangry or something so i thought that was kind of an interesting um connection we have a connection issue it seems like we're having a bit of a connection issue my friend come on i know right can you hear come me so... we have a connection issue yeah we're having a connection issue I'm not sure what to do about that. So, you can't hear me? Or you can? Oh, you're just gone oh, yeah. now. Just there. Huh? Uh, done. Raj, that's you or me? I'm like... I want to blame you, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm seeing that I have like a low signal on this connection thing, but I don't know if it's me. Oh, let me disconnect this. Is that is that I better? Know. Okay, I think it was my fault. I had a VPN going. You still there? I see still you. There? Yeah, I see you. Okay, okay. What happened, man? I think it was because I had my VPN going, so it slowed everything down. My bad. Yeah, VPN. VPNs are important, man. Yeah, you know, it's if you're if you don't want to be like tracked for stuff, yeah. <laughs> but it's okay, That's you can track this. <laughs> Yeah, it's obvious, you know, people uh, Google and all that stuff, they track, so, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but what I was saying is that uh, when you fast, you get, like, hangry, right? Like, you're, you get, you become more irritable because you're hungry and stuff, so I feel like that's kind of, like, the demon that you, you work with when you're fasting and you kind of, like, uh, in, uh, yeah, you're, you're humble, it definitely, yeah, that's, like, how you can humble yourself, right? You get hangry, but you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm trying to, you know, be peaceful. Well, I, and... I, for, for myself, right? I found, honestly, like, when you're hungry, I don't want to say hungry, man, but when you're lacking, you become, you, you find yourself gravitating towards God more, right? But when you're like rich, not like rich, but when you you're able to eat whatever you want to eat all the time, like you you kind of become complacent. I would say, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. There's definitely that sort of effect. That's why uh, I think um, uh, building those habits, like when things are going good, you're still seeking God or um, thanking God and all that. Um, so. You constantly it it makes it more consistent how um how you value God and interact with God and stuff, pray with God. That's what they said. Give thanks in all circumstances, right? Yeah. Things are going good and when things are going bad, man, give thanks. So and, a uh, cool a cool acronym I was checking out a YouTube video, a cool acronym I heard for prayer 
is uh, PHT, or FIFT. <laughs> uh, but the P stands for presence. So when you start to pray, you want to be present with yourself. And it's all, also, I the way it was explained was kind of cool. It was like when you're in a room alone, and then you hear uh, someone else come in the room. You don't necessarily have to look at them, but you know that they're present in the room with you. And so it's kind of like that kind of presence. So when you're pre present with yourself and you feel the presence of God with you, that's kind of the presence there for prayer. Or, sorry, for PhD. And then the H is heart. Because God doesn't know, or God doesn't listen to the words you say necessarily, but God listens to what your heart says. And I thought that was a cool, um, cool part of the acronym. And then the T is for trust. So it's kind of uh, trusting that God's going to take care of you. And um, the more. The more trust you, this is kind of what the video explained is, the more trust you have in God, the more God can reveal himself to you. Mm. And so, yeah, PHT, I thought that was a pretty cool acronym for a, for, a format for prayers or something like that. No, that is, that is pretty cool. One of the things, too, that I forgot to bring up, too, is what they talk about is when you pray don't do it so everybody could see you so when you see these people like dear lord hey everybody let it out you know that god doesn't like that kind of thing man he <laughs> he are, are, are you praying to honor him or are you praying just so people can see you praying you know what i mean like you said the intent behind it is what matters he actually one of one of the scriptures tells you like when you pray you should do it like kind of like in a closet by yourself where nobody can see you Sure, yeah. Where you're not, where you're not, you have like an intimate moment. I think it is important that way too. Uh, it actually says like don't pray like the hypocrites do in public. And they're referring to like the Pharisees during that time frame that wanted to show everybody how holy they are because they pray, right? So, yeah, that's one of the really important things too is when you pray, you should do it privately. And they, they talked about when you pray, don't be, like, super repetitive. Hey, God, uh, uh, help my finances. Like, he knows what you need help with before you even ask him, man. He just wants you to ask him. Hey, help me with my finances. Can you, can you please help me with my finances? Can you please help me with my finances? And it kind of reminds me of this, too. Like, and I don't, I don't, we're, we're not here to shit in any denominations or anything like that. That's not what this is about. If that's what this is, then we shouldn't be doing this, man. It just kind of like it reminds me of. Oh, like we're the, not the doing Catholic. that. <laughs> no, no, no. no. It just like reminds me of like the Catholics because Catholics have like these really repetitive prayers. And I've been talking with one of the Catholics I work with. He's giving me a lot of like material to look in. So I kind of want to present that later down the line. But like, uh, um, you know, they do the what is it, the seven Hail Marys and uh, you know whatever. Like, but the Bible explicitly explains, like, don't do that. Don't be repetitive. Like, uh, I think kind of prayer, too, when I think about it, it's similar to what you would say, like, meditation. It's just, you know, just talk with God. Just talk to him, man, about everything. You know, like, God, like, you know, man, I really want to slap the shit out of my coworker, man. You know what I mean? Like, I know I shouldn't, but I really want to, man. Like, hey, man, let's help me. Give me the, give me the. Give me the patience and the grace to not do it, you know, and things like that. And there's a few instances that similar circumstances like that have manifested in my life where I've really wanted to, you know, get into it with the coworker. And I privately went to my, like, a little office by myself and said something along the lines like I just said and, the situation, like, actually seemingly, like, uh, simmered, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you, like, one of the first people that ever prayed for me, you know, prayed for 
the situation I was going through and the moment he prayed, like there was like instant breakthrough. So hundred percent, man. Like I, I can tell you in my experience, when you're sincere in your prayer, I think like you said, that's the important part of it, man. The sincerity of it, right? If you're if your intent behind it isn't sincere, then like God's probably not listening. Another thing that like in our in the Christian spectrum, like right, like it talks about praying, man. So like if you're praying for your relationship to be blessed, right? But it's not a godly relationship, God's not gonna bless it, you know what I mean? So like if I'm praying to if me and my wife weren't married and I'm praying, hey, please bless our our relationship, he's it's almost as if he's not even listening. I said, why don't you get in alignment with me and then I'll bless you, you know? So there's a lot of other a lot more information out there other than just praying. You know, because I don't want to lead people wrong and tell them, yeah, you can pray and then everything will be great. That's not that's not the truth, man. Like if you're not in alignment with what it is you're praying with, that's what it says, be in alignment with God's will, right? If what you're praying for is an alignment for his will, then he, he's not he's not going to bless it. He's not going to do it. You know? Yeah. It and yeah, that kind of echoes the the whole idea of praying with your heart rather than your words. Like you can repeat words as much as you want. And if your heart's able to match up with that, then, hey, more power to you. But a lot of times, if you're just repeating words, sometimes, you know, your your heart doesn't isn't in the game, I guess. But if you're able to bring your heart to the game every time, then, um, yeah, I, I think that's 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 really good. Like that's that's a ideal prayer right there. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's it's hard, man. Um, especially in this world we live in, not to become complacent. Especially like being Americans, bro. Let's be real. We're fucking spoiled, rotten. We're rotten, man. We're rotten to the core. I mean, what's our struggle, man? You know? I mean, to us, it's a struggle. But, like, to people who are really struggling, it's a huge come up, you know? Like, I'm sure you're... You wish your finances could be better. You wish your relationships could be better. Like, you know what I mean? But to the guy that's dying of terminal cancer, he'd be killed to be in your place, man. Oh, man, I don't care about that relationship. I just want more time, you know? So that's why within these notes, it also says, like, give thanks in all circumstances, right? Um, understand, like, here as Americans, man, I, I got to tell this story. I used to go to these groups. Um, I, don't, I don't think any, any of them live in Washington, so we're good. <laughs> uh, at the end of these groups, we would break down into prayer groups, and everybody would take turns praying for each other, right? And I'd find myself just agitated, like really, really agitated. So finally, it was like one of the last days for the group. We do this like once a week for like eight weeks or something, right? It was like one of the last weeks, and I was in this group, and everybody started praying. What do you need prayer for? I need prayer because I got a test tomorrow. I got to take and blah 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 blah, which is another thing. But uh, I, I kind of lost it a little bit. I was like, you know what? I, I've been in these groups for eight weeks, and this is long before I even read any of this stuff, like. I was like, every time we break into these prayer groups, I hear, like, I need, I need, I need. But I never once heard anybody just give thanks for what they have. Um, you know? So, two of these women, they got upset with me. Actually, my sister-in-law was in the group with me at the time, and she was like, hmm, good point, you know? But they got really upset with me, and they told me about how they knew about struggle because, you know, they won whatever. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, uh, give thanks, always, like, you know, appreciate what you have, like, I was listening to something the other night, and it talked about, how do you know, so, as Christians, you believe you're saved just because of Christ, right? We did a presentation about that 
few weeks ago that says that your works will reflect it. There's a whole meaning behind it, right? So a lot of these modern Christians believe that, like, all you have to do is love. Love is everything, right? Well, the law still exists, okay? So those commandments still hold weight, you know? It's not like Jesus said you don't have to do any of this anymore and all you got to do is believe in me. You can do whatever you want and just believe in me and you're good. That's not the, the case by any means, right? But how would you know... Without reading scripture, you wouldn't know whether or not you were in alignment with God, right? And I, we kind of, I'm going to get into kind of what it led to, man. So how would you know? Hey, guys. Guys. Sorry. <laughs> Can you hear them? <laughs> yeah, they're having fun. Yeah, they're having fun. Um, but how would you know that you're, you're not in alignment? Like, for example, don't covet anything, right? Thou shalt not covet, right? So what does that mean, man? Like, don't right. desire, don't envy, don't... Right. Something that you don't have, don't want. Like, you know what I mean? I almost think of it as don't value something more than God. Oh, well, true. That's probably a great way of explaining it. But, like, I would say, like, don't desire things that aren't yeah. yours. Oh, okay, okay. Like, God, God, God will give you what you need and what's yours, like, you know? And... If you're constantly desiring a new car, new clothes, like that's that's a form of coveting, man. And you're not in alignment with that's one of them other things that kinda of like jabbed me the other day. I'm like, man, because I've been wanting like a new car. I want a new you know, I got my new microphone, so that was cool. But that was all to honor God, remember? Yeah. Yeah. But like uh you know, hey, I want this new iPad. Do I need an iPad? No, it's something I want. Why am I desiring? It's not something I need, like, you know? And coveting was one of them things. Like, desiring things that don't belong to you. And, you know, you shouldn't desire any of that, man. All you should desire is... Uh, that's easier said than done. But all you should desire is, you know, God... And he'll provide everything, you know, Jehovah Jireh, you know, the God of provision. He will provide you with everything you, you need. More than you could think, ask, or imagine is what it actually says, you know. More abundantly than you could think, ask, or imagine. So imagine what it is that you want. And... God wants you to have that, but more than you could even imagine, like, beyond that, you know? That makes any sense, Raj. Yeah, no, uh, it was reminding me of Psalm 23, where uh, the Psalm of David, where the first line is, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. And then other other translations, I shall not want, or yep. uh, something like that. So yeah, that resonates very close with that sort of uh with that line yeah so god knows we need god knows we need money to, to function right god knows we need food god knows we need clothes and he'll provide all that for us right we don't need to worry about any of that and i i, I struggle with that i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna sit here and be like yep i know i know but I, I do. I struggle with that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, me too. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's what prayer, though, man. So with prayer, like, you shouldn't be asking. God's not a genie. You know what I mean? Don't treat him like he's uh, uh, the uh, the story of Aladdin and the the genie. You know, he's not this magic. Hey, God, please help me get a good grade on my test. What well, you should have prayed for, God, please help me with the will to study so I can get a good grade in my test, you know? Like, uh, hey, God, please help me get a job. No, hey, God, please help me with the will to go out and knock on every available business so I could seek a job, right? You know what I mean? Don't treat him like he's a genie. Like, uh, you know, they say faith without works is dead, so that's just another example of it, you know? So... Yeah, no, I I feel that I I feel like I feel like you can treat God a little like a genie though, 
Uh, <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> oh. Um. So to an extent, I'd say like this, man. There's one scripture yeah. that says if if you believe with all your heart that uh, if you pray and you ask God to move this mountain and you believe that mountain will move, right? But we got to keep in mind that's not a good that that's like hyperbole. It's not a real. I don't know. I'm not saying that's not real. It's not a literal thing. What I perceive when I hear that, it's like uh, I hear all things are possible through God, but also, like, if it doesn't align with his will, then he's not going to, you know, hey, God, please kill this guy for me. You know, he's not going to do that. Like, you know what I mean? Hey, God, please make my ex-girlfriend suffer. Like, you know what I mean? No, he's not going to do that, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Matter of fact, that's an un- yeah. that's a, a, a totally ungodly thing to say, man, you know? Like, we should wish the best for everybody and wish happiness for everybody and peace for everybody, you know what I mean? And, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I guess I wouldn't say to, like, a, hey, God, make me a millionaire, you know? And there's a lot of that prosperity uh, movement going on at the moment. You know, when you hear a lot of these pastors tell you, God wants you to be a millionaire. God wants you to have the nicest things. He wants you to fly in private jets. Uh, I don't think he does. I, 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 I don't think, I don't think, uh, I feel like God doesn't really, like, all those things that seem so big to us are so small to God. So God's like, uh, whatever, man. Like, you want to write it? That's fine. Like, I I don't know. Like, uh, but um, I think what you're saying about wanting versus needing like God is definitely on the page of giving you what you need rather than so much of what you want per se. Cause like what you uh, or your body or whatever, what your, the pleasures of the flesh or whatever, like what your body wants or you want may not be in alignment with what he wants. And he, God being like, like the overall like the collective consciousness i that's the way i like to think about it is um like it may like what you want may be opposite of what like the collective consciousness wants or what you need so in that case yeah you're not going to get what you want and but it actually like works out for the best because um it seems like um if god knows everything or infinite knowledge right god knows all the little paths that each reality could take and so he's just giving us the optimal optimal path based on our desires even even our personal desires but god's giving us like the best possible thing for that situation uh at least that's how I like to think about it. Yeah. Um, I kind of got into a debate with that with my wife one day about. They said, God knows everything before it happens, what my wife said. And I'm not sure that I totally buy into that concept, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm still kind of. Um, I don't know. So it was like, uh, I just kind of look at like. Us, we're like a, a social experiment for God is what I kind of see, man, sometimes. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. <laughs> Where he's like, he's like, let me create these things called human. I mean, as a matter of fact, let me make a, let me call this thing a man, okay? I'm going to build him from dirt. He's going to look just like me. I'm going to have a little buddy I could, I could pat him on the head every once in a while, make, him, make myself feel, you know, whatever. You know, man, I look at my buddy, I, he's lonely. He needs a, he needs a companion. I'm going to take, while you sleep, I'm going to take this rib out of him and make a woman. Okay, so he's got man and woman now, right, you know? But man and women are living in paradise and they're loving life. Everything is great. They had it made, like, you know, the best food, weather was perfect. They never had to work. Just they, they existed and it was great, like, you know? Then they jack up, right? He's like, man, what did you guys do, you know? Like, oh, well, we blah, blah, blah. He's like, well, these guys jacked up. Okay. 
So he tries to clean up the mess, you know. Like ten generations, they jack up again. He's like, you know what, man? I'm gonna just flood the earth, or whatever. You know what I mean? He tries to clean up that mess again. And they, in this little civilization, jacks up, and he's like, man, I'm gonna wipe this civilization from the earth, and then cleans it up, and then they mess up again. They mess up again. And he's like, you know what, man? These humans just cannot get their shit together. Like, they need a savior. You know what I mean? Because if they keep doing this, they're just they're, they're never they're never gonna get it. You know, they got to have something. And I think that's how Jesus came about, personally. The human yeah. form. Because I, I think Jesus was there in the spiritual form, but, like, the human form came, you know? And he's like, hey, man, like, you know, we need to... We need a savior, you know? Because these guys are never going to get it. They're, we're just inherently screw-ups, you know what I mean? So that's yeah. what I think. In, a, in a, the Cliff's Notes, in my unorthodox fashion of explaining it yeah yeah no that's cool i i kind of think on a similar lines like that but um maybe instead of god saying oh these people these poor people they need someone it's more like it's more like us like we we live we created these worlds of suffering and um like medieval times or you know the roman roman times and like, yeah, some people had it good, but a vast majority of people were like, you know, peasants or something and just like hard labor, uh, hard lifestyle, just like a lot of suffering. And so they're like, God, like, help us. And then when enough people say, God, help us, that's when Jesus comes comes around and be like, all right, I'm here. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> and ironically, the name Jesus. Aramaic, Hebrew, whatever it is, man, it means God's salvation, right? Mm -hmm. So that was actual word. It wasn't like a name. Mm -hmm. And like until we adopt, until we adopted it to a name, that's why I kind of got lost in translation. Um, as it went from the original verbiage of like Yeshua, right, or like Joshua, I guess is even what I've heard other videos talk about, but Yeshua. And uh, it wasn't until the Romans actually came and they, I don't remember how they changed it, but then when we adopted it in English, it came Jesus, which we just hear it and we think of it like a person and not a word. Um, you know what I mean? So it was just understood during those times. That's why whenever I do my notes, I always try to go back to like the original text. I try to, yeah. and, and like get ver verify that it still coincides with what we're reading today. And uh, I didn't do it this last one. I was kind of in a, in a we kind of like picked this at the last minute, but that's all good. And, no, that's uh, awesome though. I like how uh, um, you said Jesus's name is is uh, God's salvation. And by the way, you were totally right about the Islam thing. It means um, submission to God. So. A plus for you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank <laughs> F, you, Mohammed. That's you. You taught me that. <laughs> hope you see this in a. Hope you see this soon. Yeah, I learned that from Mohammed, man. He taught me that. Yeah. So I'm listening. I'm, I'm learning a lot from these, man, and I learned the most from the Muslims, man. It's just crazy. So I hold on. So who named? People. Who named Jesus? Jesus was was Jesus his like, his mom gave him that name, or who gave Jesus the name Jesus? So Jesus was a name that like was adopted when we like the Romans changed the name from like Yeshua to like some form of Jesus. And then I, I don't know how what the actual word was in, in Roman. But when English came as it went from uh, the original like Aramaic Hebrew to Greek to Roman to maybe Latin to English. Right. Like it just it arrived from point A Yeshua to point Z Jesus, right? When the original intent, like uh, Yeshua, was a word. Like, in, it'd be like let's let's see if we can put this in perspective, man. Um, what's a cool word in English? Uh, like what's a powerful word waffle? in English? Oh. Uh, <laughs> a waffle. Banana. Um, a powerful. Word. <laughs> 
uh, well, like in Spanish, right? Um, the word lluvia, right? It means rain, rain. in Spanish, okay? It's rain, yeah. So it means lluvia in Spanish. So like we said, when she was born, it was raining, so we named her lluvia. So people were named in accordance with like an event or their purpose or something. Hence the name Yeshua, right? Which meant literally God's salvation during God's that salvation. time. Okay. So when people heard that name, like it was just like that's what it meant, you know? So Yuvia. So they named her Yuvia because it was raining. But along the lines it comes and it gets adopted into another language and it goes from Yuvia to Yuviana. Okay? And now Yuviana isn't the same thing. So we're just looking at like her Yuviana or like Yuviet or you know, just it, it, it as another language adopts it, they kind of make it somewhat attractive, I guess. I don't know. And but that word it just it just sounds like a name, you know? But the original word was Yuvia and if you know Spanish it just means oh, you know, that means rain. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I no, that, same. it's always cool to see the the um the history and and uh, make sure your tra- all the translations are aligning and stuff. Well, I do want to uh, get back to prayer, and I was curious, what are uh, do you have a favorite prayer that you you recite, or what what do you what's your like go to prayer or favorite way of praying? Um, short and direct for me, honestly. Um, yeah. And I don't know if that's right. I don't know if that's right or wrong. Um, but short and direct. I I kind of get like agitated, and it's probably something I really got to work on. But like, when people pray for forty minutes about the same thing, it's like he heard you, man. You don't you don't you don't need to hear, it, man. If you want to just chill there and talk with him, talk with him, man. You know, but. I mean, we don't. We all don't need to be praying here for forty minutes about uh, healing somebody of anything, or praying for somebody's mental health, or you know, he heard you the first time. Sure. Yeah. And he knows what you need. You know what I mean? And that, that's just my outlook on it. And I don't know if that's right or wrong, man. But um, yeah, short and direct. Uh, I was at a men's breakfast one time. I don't like praying in front of people, man. So I'm, so, so I'm a work in progress. So when we do it on here, it's a little out of my comfort zone, but I'm, I'm working on it. And, uh, well, you even said it's not like good to pray in front of people. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's like certain circumstances, obviously where we're just like corporate prayer and things like that. Or right. when you're having before a meal, things of that nature. Right. So right. I was at a men's breakfast, for, uh, one of the church I used to go to. And, uh, one of the, one of the older guys, uh, his name was Billy Nolan, RIP. And uh, he, uh, he's like, all right, you, you're going to pray today. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, everybody's sitting there looking at me, and I'm not even, I never even prayed in front of everybody, man. So I said, uh, God, thank you for everything, and uh, let us do your will. Amen. And everybody was, yeah! Everybody was, yeah! That was awesome! That was like, a hell of a prayer well, right there. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't expecting, like, that type of uh, response, but, like, yeah, they were like, that's it. You got it, you know? And I think that's, looking back on it, man, I really think that that's pretty accurate. Like, you know, let us pray, like, thank you for everything, and, you know, as long as what we're doing aligns with your will, we're good, man. Amen, let's eat. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I dig it. Short and direct. I'm kind of like, yep. I definitely uh, am a fan of that short and direct style as well. It's because uh, I, I don't really have a way with words like a lot of people out there who can like really throw out some eloquence in their prayers. I'm just pretty, pretty basic. <laughs> yeah, I think. The intent behind it is what matters, right? Yeah. Um, so number one, us feeling, I don't know, not awkward or uncomfortable. It's not unnormal, but it's something we got to work beyond. 
but I feel like the more we do it, um, the easier it becomes, and you, you, you can start to sound like the people you're talking about. And I've had certain circumstances where I was felt the need. Not all the time. I don't have this where I like, I got to pray for this person right now. Like my wife, she wants to, she was here right now. She'd be like, all right, let me, let me pray for you, you know? And she would, she, she would do one of them 20 minute prayers for you. And you'd be like, <laughs> you keep looking up. But, um, we done yet? <laughs> yeah. No, but I, 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 I felt the need to pray for people in certain circumstances. And then like, you know it's genuine when it's not you talking. Like, I didn't know where these words were coming from, but they were coming, and it was just like... Because you know how, like, I, I feel like you get it, too, when we do it here. It's like you, when you pray, like, you're trying to think of the next thing to say, and it's like there's this big pause, and that's not, like, the circumstance, like, in these circumstances that I'm describing, like, it was as if something took over, and I sounded like coherent you know and there was a few times one, one time particularly random person and one time particularly um it was a woman uh a woman like a, a woman I, I i worked with during the time that like the guys were going really hard on this woman like talking a lot of like garb like shit to her and this woman, she could tell she had, like, self-esteem issues. And just for whatever reason, I started, I was driving home. And, like, she she came upon me. And I was, oh, man. Like, that means, like, something was putting me, like, to feel empathy for her in that moment. So I did in that moment. I, like, kind of, like, okay, man. My God, you know, whatever. Prayed for her. And then I even went the next day <laughs> and, you know, kind of, like, told some of the guys, hey, you guys got to, like, back off like she's not a guy man you know like you know how we men we could handle that kind of stuff women women aren't made to handle that so yeah i guess in, the, in those moments when it's not like you talking uh, that's when the most the most genuine prayers that come out of that's dope yeah yeah i definitely uh like there's definitely thinking when I do some, when most of the times I do a prayer, but like, I like what you're saying. Like just, uh, it's almost like you're not talking. It's some, something or someone else. Uh, yeah, that's a cool, cool concept there. Um, yeah. And then I was, uh, another question I wanted to ask was how do you choose between like improvising a prayer versus a, tr a more traditional or a prayer that was like kind of made already um it's probably like the circumstance right yeah so like psalm psalm 91 which i mentioned last week psalm 91 right it's like a prayer of protection right um so like in a moment where you i, I would probably say when you're when you feel your life is in jeopardy that's probably that prayer right there. Uh, you know, he who, what is it? He who dwells in the presence of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That's the one, remember I told you, like they said, a uh, thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right. No harm will come near you. You will only sit and observe and witness the punishment of the wicked with your eyes, whatever it is, you know? So like he's saying like, even like, like especially like in war times, like if you're a, a soldier, something like that is like really powerful. Just know that like as long as you're in like God's favor, which as a believer we are, like no harm can come near you. Like that's a that prayer has that much uh, strength, that much clout, weight, whatever you want to call it. That nobody, no harm can come upon you, you know? So in certain dangerous circumstances, I would say, like, something like that would be, mm. you know, like, spit that one out. Like, if you're ever, <laughs> yeah. if, if you're ever in a, 
predicament where, you know, you got a gun to your head. Hey, man, you know, spit that one out. Psalm 91. Try to memorize that if you can. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, that one's a powerful one, man. And I heard there's a clothing line out coming out about it soon. Oh wow, is that some alpha? <laughs> <laughs> no shilling, no shilling. <laughs> Bring the terms out today. <laughs> yeah, you know we I noticed we haven't used any of our uh, any of our terms like we use, man. Like hey, yeah. Like earlier, earlier you rugged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't say it like that. We didn't, didn't say, say anything that. like that, man. No. <laughs> but earlier you rugged, you know? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I would say. A simple way of explaining it, man. Like, you know, I think I think prayer is just like a, a conversation, man, sometimes, you know. Just a conversation. Like you should just be you know, having that conversation, like, all the time, you know, like, uh, your brother says, Muslims pray five times a day, but the Orthodox Christians actually pray seven times a day, like, every day, seven times a day, so, how many times a day do we pray, do you, I'm not trying to call you out, man, There's no, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I don't count, so it's hard to say, but, like, if you, um, like uh, a a prayer that I kind of do. I'm starting to do more frequently now. Is the Bismillah, Hirahma, Nirahim, and I think that just it just means God, most gracious, most merciful. Let me double check on that, but um. Yeah, that I've kind of been saying more frequent. Like, I'll say it before I eat, or like, if I forget to say it, I'll just do it as I eat, or um, even before like doing something. Like, if I'm gonna go smoke, I'll I'll say a little prayer like that, and be like, "Sorry, <laughs> here I go." And um, yeah, no, I'm. I feel like um, I. I basically just like pray whenever I want pretty much. It's just, it's, it's very casual. It's very like, you know, um, yeah, I don't, I don't make like a, it's not like a whole ceremony type thing. It's just kind of like a remembrance that God is number one. <laughs> kind of yeah, no, that's good. That that's really good. If I'm being candid, I seemingly I pray more when I need God than when I don't, right? Just kind of jacked up. And uh, I think that's normal though, and like it definitely takes like extra effort to be to if things are going good, and then be like, oh, thank you God for this moment or this this thing. Um. Because you, yeah, it's easy to get caught up in in the happiness or joy of the situation, and um, just like, um, but I think that's kind of the part of making God number one is that like even the the joyful things that happen to you, you like if God's number one, then God's still number one. God's kind of above the joy. It's through God that you can experience that joyous feeling or experience in the first place so um it's kind of like yeah. yeah once you once you start putting god first for like everything it kind of just um yeah you don't really have a choice <laughs> to to not thank god because you kind of like um or just like yeah, but you're you're in the presence of them, right? Which you're you're gonna to touch on a point I want to bring up, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one, of, one of the one of the pastors at my church one time, and this guy he really sets it off sometimes. Like he he doesn't speak all the time. He's like once every 
month, maybe two months or something like that. He he, he fill in, give the the lead pastor a break, and he'll provide the service. Right. One of the things he brought up was, I think he started off something along the lines of, some of you don't want to go to heaven. You just don't want to go to hell. Okay. So how you let that's how he led into it kind of and then he says some of you guys have trouble spending 20 minutes a day in prayer with God but you think you're going to spend all of eternity with him you know what I mean so like you said man uh, the more time you spend with him the more the more you become like him, then the easier it is to spend that time with him, I guess, right? I don't know if that makes mm. sense. Yeah, it that but, makes sense. It's like um uh, a, uh it's like a positive feedback loop. So Well let's put it let's put it like this. Like yeah. like uh how hard is it sometimes let's just say like Neither, neither one of us are at a point in our lives where we play, like, any type of contact sport, right? Let's just say, like, football, okay? And I played when I was younger, but I'm nowhere. I don't have any desire of doing it now, man. But if we went and we played football today, man, and we... How would we feel after we got done, man? Oh, man, I don't want to do that again, you know what I mean? It depends. Probably, all... probably tired, but I don't know. It's uh... I, I, I can tell you definitely I wouldn't want to do it again, man, but... If yeah. <laughs> you got up and you did it again. If I got up and I did it again the next day, and if I got up, I did it the next day, and it might be by the seventieth or eightieth day, like, oh, this is this ain't bad. I actually like it now again. You know what I mean? Sure. So it's it's creating that discipline to make sure you give time to the creator. And I heard this on a, a one of those YouTube shorts the other day. You know, like, if you fake, if you fake uh, being happy, like, that's still a form of being happy, man. Like, eventually, if you fake being happy enough, you'll be happy. You know what I mean? Does yeah. that make sense? And yeah. It's like, it's, like, it's, it's, it's like going to the gym, man. Like, if you fake, like, hey, I'm going to get up how I feel. I'm, I'm going to go. Like... I want to go, even though you don't want to go, like, like myself every day, you know, I got to wake up at like 3.30 to go to work, right? And it sucks, but I've done it so long that I've created a discipline that no matter how I feel, like, I get up and I go, you know? And it's yeah. like, all right, man, you, you see the fruit of your labor, your family's, you're able to, you have a home, you're able to take care of your family, things of that nature, and I guess it's similar to that. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. And uh you I think uh, I like what you said about habit, like developing that habit to you know, wake up every day for work or a habit for taking time for God for in whatever way you do that. Um I think like that's what I'm trying to do now in my life is just kind of build better habits um that spend like taking time for god or like i mean this 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 podcast is definitely part of that like uh doing yep. this once a week and just yep. talking about god or whatever's on your one's mind relative to god um and um like meditate i consider meditation like a time of getting closer to God, um, and prayer. Um, another thing I'm doing now is, uh, oh, this is something that's kind of cool is like turning prayer, like prayers into songs. Cause, um, a prayer, uh, like the, so a prayer I like a lot is the, is part of the Psalm of da David. Even through, even though I walk through the valley, darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. And 
Um, I mean, there's that, uh, there's that, uh, that song as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I take a look at my Julio. life. Julio, yeah, that's right. And yeah. I don't know that that always kind of pops in my mind when I think of the shadow of the valley of death uh, line. And but yeah, I think turning prayers into songs is kind of a cool, cool thing to do. I don't know if uh, what what are your thoughts behind that, like prayers of songs or something like that. Are there any prayer so, songs that you dig? Yeah. Yeah, no, there's there's a there's actually it's a pretty popular thing. Um, if you're interested, I could send you like a few of them. But like, yeah, that's a it's not a uncommon thing. Like, there's like whole verses that have been turned into like hooks, and there's actually whole verses that were turned into like songs. So uh, it, it's more along the lines like contemporary i guess they call it like christian music but yeah 100 percent, they have taken uh bible verses and turned them into like songs and like some of these songs are pretty popular are have, have you ever i don't know you may have never heard of a lot of these groups but there's one group they they kind of got overplayed so like in the I guess in the Christian spectrum, not a lot of, there's not a lot of talent in music, you know? So when you do have like a talented uh, artist, artists, they really stand out in that spectrum. And like, they just get played and played and played because they're the only thing that's like talented. That's just from what I see from my perspective. And yeah, yeah. So one of them was called, uh, Maverick City, they're like really big, I guess, like really big. So that's a group. Uh, yeah. Dope. Yeah, yeah, they're they're like they're probably I don't know I, I wouldn't say the biggest act, but probably perhaps the the biggest. I I would think, man, like one of the biggest. Like they're pretty much mainstream, I guess I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of crazy, man. Like, uh, I was, um, I'm doing this Baha'i prayer slash study sessions, right? And um, decided to turn one of the prayers into a song. The It's a quick one. It's, uh, is there any remover of difficulties save God? Say, praise be God. He is God. All are his servants and abide by his bidding. And so I was like, oh, that's that's a short and sweet little little prayer there. Let me go ahead and make that into a song. And then um, I kind of got it going. And then I searched it on Google. And man, there were like, there's like five, ten, probably more <laughs> like high Somebody level. Beat you. Oh, totally. Beat yeah. You to it. There yeah. was there was a super sick like chorus that sang it in like such a cool way. And I wanted to bring the video up here to share but i couldn't find it again but it was like it was amazing so yeah no there's there's all sorts of uh prayers being turned into song and i don't know i think that's like kind of a fun way to worship yourself is kind of just to do that yourself and like come up with songs for some prayers you like or something like that so just throwing that maybe out we there. could yeah maybe we can come up with one and uh an NFT and sell it. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll pray. We'll, mm. it, it'll be a prayer for like financial abundance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There, there's prayers. There's prayers for, I mean, and anything. So, like, here's the thing about like Bible, and I can't speak for half of I wish your brother was on. Hopefully, he comes on next week, man. Yeah, yeah, even like Desiree, even. But I know her, she, she says she's gonna be busy, caught up for a little while, which is cool, yeah. cool. Understand, but like, uh, like in the Bible, and anything that you need guidance for, a prayer for, like, there's something there for it, man. Uh, like anything you even like, it's there. You know, people like reality TV shows because they're they're just entertaining, I guess, man. I don't know. I don't know why I like yeah. them. Why people like 
yeah, the, sure. the, the desperate the desperate housewives of Atlanta, whatever these shows are, you know what I mean? Where they have these women, they fight each other. They're like famous housewives, and they get into fights, and the men, whatever, you know. Bro, there's so many stories in the Bible that just have that, you know? You really want to read some dysfunction, like open up the Old Testament, man. I think I was telling you that when I was going through the 12 tribes of Israel thing yeah. I was doing. And, uh, yeah, like when you, anything you want. Like you, you need to know how to have sex with your wife properly. It has a whole section about it, man. I'll tell you how you're supposed to do it, bro. What does it say? Yeah. Well, it, it gets pretty graphic, I'll say that, man. And, uh, <laughs> but you, you, I'm just like, there's no, anything you could think of, man. You know, how to raise your children, how to, uh, how to be a husband, how to, how to be a bachelor, how to be, you know, whatever. Anything you could think of, man, the, the guidance is there. But yet we always seek to the world. You know what I mean? But we have this wisdom that's infinite. It's given to us freely, but like we'll we'll go pull up a YouTube video, man. Oh no. And all these YouTube videos now, it's just everybody's seeking clout. Nobody's I'll say this about what we're doing here, man. If nobody ever watches this, we don't care. Like we're having a great conversation, we're growing. And anybody's welcome to join, pretty much, right? And we're we're willing to talk about anything. We'll bring in them controversial topics, all that. But, you know, a lot of these YouTube channels, they try to, you know, they have, they have a niche. They specialize. This one specializes in defaming women. This one specializes in, you know, uh, minimizing men. This one specializes in, I don't know, whatever, you know. And none of them have really bring any value to your life. But I think people just watch it because they want to be entertained. And if you really want to see like that type of entertainment, like open up the Old Testament. There's yeah, there's entertained, and then there's also like um, what's it called? The bias, uh, confirmation bias. So yeah, yeah. You you, you don't you, you don't want to a certain way. You want you want to hear something that affirms that, and you'll listen to that yep. over and over, and you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm right. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Men ain't shit. Oh yeah, women ain't shit. You right. know, yeah, exactly, right. exactly. Like, and, 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 and the reality of that statement I just made about men ain't shit and women ain't shit, the reality of it is it's true. Both of it's true. People aren't shit. Human beings aren't shit, man. So we need to stop relying on ourselves to give each other advice and quit guiding each other down the to, to the slaughterhouse and you know go go to the source where even whatever your source is I'm not we're not here to try to convince anybody which whatever but like uh, when we talk amongst each other like your brother and myself how often are we just like wow we're like 100% in alignment with what we're saying you know what I mean like there's no disagreement really in almost how many percent of the things we talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I found that pretty surprising too, how much like a lot of what you guys are saying are pretty much the same. Maybe they're like 90% the same and maybe 10%, you know, there's differences of something. Well, those like, 10% are like really, really big differences, but it's like, let's not focus on that 10%, man. And I'm not here to say like right. the one world religion. Like, no, I'm, I'm telling you, I do believe in what I believe in and I believe in his truth. Right. And that's that. You know, and just like your brother says, he believes in what he believes in and he believes in is it true. And that's that. But like, how can we... There's so many videos now dedicated to like people trying to argue with each other and convince each other they're right. And the best way to convince somebody you're right is by telling them how stupid they are and how right you are. And then, ah, oh, man, I, I never saw you. I, I, never, I never realized that. Like, that's a good point. You know, nobody, nobody is going to be receptive to that. Uh, one of my pastors, he brought up something, uh, and I think we talked about it in, a few, in this space, or in these podcasts, whatever, quite a few times. Still using that old terminology. And um, Twitter spaces. He was... 
Yes, yes, yes. Well, because we've done, we've done hundreds of them. Yeah. Yeah, we've done hundreds of them, man. And um, June is Pride Month in the United States, right? And he talks about this. He's like, he says, like, screaming at somebody and telling them, like, they're going to go to hell. You're never going to... Like, why would I want to be with those people, those Christians there? Like, you know what I mean? Why? Like, you're just sitting here screaming at me. I'm minding my own business. Like, you know, go into those festivities and trying to force your, your, force your values upon people that don't want them. Like, how, how, how many people do you think you're going to capture? You know what I mean? It's like those, it's like that same group of people coming to a church and screaming outside and telling you how stupid you guys are and you guys all should go to jail. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's not going to get yeah, anywhere. Like, no, it's not. Yeah. So, like, what I always think, man, is it's not up to us to convince others to come we can't do it with our words, and maybe sometimes you can, but I'd say most often times you can't. You can't do it with your words. You can only do it by being an example and prayer. Like you're supposed to pray for those people. Like that—that's the most powerful tool we have. Is you know, prayer. So when we see somebody. It's not up to us to be like, hey, guys, Jesus loves you. To go stand in front of a pride fest festivity and say, Jesus loves you. I just want to come here and tell you how Jesus loves you. And I've, I've, I've commented on one guy's channel because he, he always keeps popping up in my shorts. And I always dislike his videos. But he always he's notorious for going to those like festivities and just... I'm here to preach the gospel because I want to save your souls. No, you're not. You're here to grow your YouTube channel. Let's be honest. You don't care about their souls, man. If you did, you'd be just praying for them endlessly, privately in your room so nobody could see you. Know what I mean? Yeah, I feel that. And I think, like, a big part that I see for things like that is that um, there's a lot of, like, anger and hostility a lot of the times between people or whoever and um i yeah when it when things turn into anger and hostility it kind of makes me feel like okay maybe this isn't really the best way it's to go about though. things right god's not involved at that point right yeah god i don't think god is about anger and hostility god is more of a love and compassion kind of um well, there, so yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. but he, there's also an anger and hostile side of him like when you when, when you really turn away you know what i mean but that's another yeah. one yeah and um yeah no and i think like that turning away and getting all into the anger and frustration i I um I see that with a lot of these groups that kind of don't uh agree with each other. They they create enemies out of each other and they treat each other like they're less than human or that there's something so bad about this person that they're like monsters. It basically you you turn someone into the enemy and then you make them subhuman so you don't feel bad about being mean to them. And um, I think, yeah, that, uh, I think that's what kind of leads us astray. Like, I think the whole idea of loving people is that, you know, you accept people and you kind of give them freedom to be who they want to be. It's not hurting you or really affecting you in any way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I do think um, having that love for another person is kind of the key 
the key part of religion even like having that love for someone else despite you know how bad you think they may be or something like that you still harbor love in your heart for people well that, that's if uh the, the the was it last week i did it well, I think it was in the forgiveness one I did, man. But anything done without love, like, means nothing. So, like, if you're if you're trying to save somebody's soul, allegedly, right? And you're doing it so you can grow your YouTube channel. You know what I mean? You obviously you're not doing it out of love, man. You're doing it. You have selfish intentions behind it. You know? Um, yeah, hundred percent. And I think there's a way to present things in a manner, in a loving manner, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. There has, there has to be like a, a vested relationship, I, I feel. Like, I can tell you, speak for myself, I'm not going to take advice from somebody that's not vested in me, you know what I mean? And I'm somebody like the type of person, I need like tough love. I don't need, uh, I'm not a, I need... Hey guys, you know, just do better. That's not gonna work with me, man. Like I need <laughs> tough love, but it has to come from somebody that you know is actually doing it out of the loving spot. That's like vested in you, like you know. Right. So I mean, right. like, I think, I think we've known each other long enough that like, if I if I told you something, you wouldn't get offended. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. You would be like, oh no, this, you're, look at you, I'll judge you. Because that's the thing people do, too, is, like, when you say something to them, all of a sudden now you're judgy. It's not judgy, man, when you're telling people the truth, man, you know? So we got to get past these these blurred boundaries and understand, like, what, how we're supposed to approach things, I guess the way, like, God really wants us to approach things, like, not by, not in our way. Stop relying on our human wisdom, you know? What I just mentioned what? earlier. One thing uh, that Nathan and I were studying was uh, the idea of kindly tongue. So, like, just being kind in the words you say uh, and how that can create a more, um, I guess, hospitable conversation or something. Because, like, it's really easy to be frustrated and just say, you know, not such a nice thing that comes to your head. But um, I think when you try and filter it out or you try and just, yes, you have something to say, but you try and give that in a more kind and compassionate way, then that really can help with um, improving the that whole reactiveness, right? If so, if you say something or have some advice for someone, you don't want them to react and get defensive. So having, like, saying things in just a kinder, more compassionate way, I think is a key. And that's like, it takes work to do that. Uh, I'm not, like, I'm okay. I, I actually do an okay job at that, but it's still like, I it's like yeah I do second guess like the things I say a lot of the times and I'm not super confident about the things I say too so um yeah but like yeah I think um that I, the kindly tongue thing is a is a is a nice way to put it <laughs> a kindly tongue yeah I think yeah I said uh, uh, certain circumstances definitely depending on the individual be honest, man. With me, a kind, kind thing isn't gonna work, man. Sometimes I need somebody rough, raw, but it's gotta come from a loving. Uh, you gotta know, like they're they're actually vested in you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think there's a difference between like saying things that are like quote unquote kind and nice, but uh, but you can say things that are like not kind and nice, like "Hey, you motherfucker." But it can still be said, like, when you say it, it's like, oh, yeah, that's like me saying, hey, buddy. Yeah. But you're just yeah. saying it, yeah. motherfucker, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think you're right, man. Yep, yeah. definitely, man. Well, sweet, man. Yeah, that, this is a solid uh, podcast session. Do you, do you want to do a prayer to close it out, or do you want me to do, do a prayer? 
Well, I got a. I got something. It might be a little unorthodox way to close it out, but it probably suits our our personalities, man. All right, cool. What? Wait, what is it? Is it a prayer? Let me see. I don't know if we can hear it. Let me let me see if we can hear it first, man. Okay. Sorry, the car is. Is it a YouTube oh. video? Yeah, yeah. We could do the watch YouTube oh, thing and then uh, kind of. Yeah, let me do that. Join activity. Wow, video unavailable. Ooh. Can you see it? I see it says video unavailable. All right, hold on. Let me see. Let me try this. If we can't play the music, then that's, that's disappointing, man. Hold on. Let me go with... Share my screen. Are we there? Huh? I'm just telling you. I, I didn't even tell you that. Commercials, bro. Can you hear them? I can hear it. This car right here. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I think this should be our theme song, man. Oh, that's the When Doves Cry uh, huh? song going. It's the When's Dove, When Doves Cry song by Prince. Hold on, Raj. Go back. Yeah, I think we should make that our theme song, though. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty cool song. You know? I think it kind yeah. of fits our... Fits our theme here, man. I think so. I think so. MC Hammer, bro. Pray. Well, that was MC Hammer. Dope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so do you want to close out with a prayer still, or? <laughs> you want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Dear God. God Almighty, thank you for your glory, your amazing love, and allow the listeners and us to, to seek you whenever possible, and may we thoroughly enjoy the rest of our days thank you god amen amen bro that's why we pray 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 just to make it today you got it man <laughs> i'm gonna post that in the chat so it's our new theme song awesome awesome all right matt all right Rod. thanks for an awesome session man all right dude we'll talk till next time peace later